In this step then, we're going to import the static mesh that we need for the logs that are in the fire, and we're going to create our little fireplace ready for when we put the fire in there down the line. So let's let's do it, let's do it. So uh, we need to import the geometry. So I'll repeat as I keep repeating, if you are using my assets, then you'll already have this. If not, you can create your own and import them, that's fine. Um, but I've got my fire logs here, so they are, I'll show you where I've got them. So if you're using my project, if you go into the models and textures folder, into the cabin folder, I've decided it's part of the cabin and we've got fire logs here, the FBX. So we'll bring that in and we'll put it into that folder there, the geometry folder. Here are the import options. So again, it's not a skeletal mesh. I want to auto generate a collision on this and we are going to leave everything at default. So import. So as you can see, didn't spend an awful lot of time making this. Look at that. Wow. That is so cool. What I did, I don't want to shatter the illusion. I made a cylinder and I just duplicated it a lot. But, you know, it, it's still, it's good in it, it's good. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the rock asset. I don't know why I've still got those things still open. What I need to do now is create the material for that. And this one uses an emissive like the window did to sort of get that hot glowy look that burning wood has. So we'll get that and we've got, oh, I did create the... Um, the right slot name for this as well it's called well i call that burnt wood m so we'll call it something like that so let's go to our content folder if you imported all the textures earlier you should have the ones that you need for this one but if not we've got burnt wood diffuse burnt wood emissive and burnt wood normal that are also available in that folder there so let's make a new material okay we're going to call this bad boy M underscore B U R N T wood. And let's open it up. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we're going to need ooh, at least three text samples. I think I've got four of that. Did I have a roughness for it? Let me see. Did I get a roughness for my burnt wood? Nope. So we're just going to put in a constant for the. The roughness okay so let's bring in the color diffuse okay let's bring in the emissive yes very nice very nice and let's bring in the normal there we go I don't want this to be glossy so we're going to set this to 0.9 Let's plug everything in. Okay, so we'll do that just to get us started. But hopefully you'll remember that we need to put a multiply on the emissive texture to actually get that to work at all. So we're gonna put a multiply node in. So I'm gonna hold M, left click. There's a multiply, hello there, beautiful. So we're gonna put the output into A we're going to plug the output there into emissive color and then we need to set b to something let's go for 20 like we did for the other one and you should see that that starts to glow and look damn sexy oh that's good oh i like it right beautiful that's the material made let's save it there we go right now let's go back to our fire logs asset and we're going to add the M underscore burnt wood material to it. That's not bad. Okay, I have, think I've got the same issue as I had with the rock one though, where I kind of want this to tile a little bit more. So let's add a texture coordinate node to this. And that needs to be plugged into all three of these. So I think I'm going to go for 1.5 and 1.5. I don't want to overdo this because it kind of ruins the effect. So let's save that. And then we'll have a look at how it looks on the actual asset itself before we move on. Okay, so let's have a look over there. Yeah, I think that looks okay. So by the time we've got all the particle flames coming up over this, it should look pretty sweet. 
So let's save this asset and then we'll get it into our level somewhere. Build a little fireplace. Ooh, right. So where are we? So I think I want it kind of about here, maybe. So let's go into our geometry folder. We're going to bring this fire logs asset in. And let's have a look at that. Do I think that's a good size? Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, I like it. I think it's good. Maybe I'll I'll size it ever so slightly. Yeah, that's good. Right. So next job is to get some rocks in here. Maybe not that big though. So that um, it kind of looks like we've got a deliberate ring of stones to keep this fire in place. That's what like cowboys do, isn't it? I think, I don't know. Right, so this is too big and if I try and scale it down, it's not working for me. And the reason for that is the snapping here. So I need to change the snapping. So the scaling options at the moment are doing it every 0 0.25 on the scale. So let's just move down to the next one and see if I prefer that. That's pretty nice actually. So let's get this one in place. So as I said earlier, I do like these to intersect the ground a little bit. I just think it looks better. Let's rotate it around a bit and maybe just that way a bit too. And put it into place. It's very nice. And then what I'll do is I'll hold Alt on my keyboard to get a copy of this. There we go. And I'm just now going to change my scaling down to the next one. So they get a little bit more freedom with the size of it. I want even more freedom than that. Let's go down to that one. Yes, good, 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 good. Are they different sizes? I think they're slightly different. Okay, let's rotate it around. We want it to look different. That's really important. And then we'll move that one down and just put it in place. And now just repeat this until you've got a ring of rocks around your fire. And I'm going to do that thing where, like here's on the red earlier. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, it worked. Hooray. Okay. So you can see now I've got a nice little kind of ring of, of rocks that's going to contain this fire. And one final touch. You won't really be able to see it much anyway once the, the particles are in there. But... It looks weird that there's grass under there. So we're just going to get our landscape painting head back on. And we're going to paint a little bit of dirt in there. So let's just get this brush about the right size. And in about the right place. Out there I think. In fact let's just turn the softness, the fall off of this brush up. Because that's quite important to me on this one. There we go. So I'm just going to click here a few times. Tool strength's not high enough. Do 0 0.2. And that should just start to make that look a little bit. Yeah, I like that. There we go. So that looks a bit more like it belongs there now. It's a bit tattier, a bit, a bit uglier. We'll get rid of a bit of this grass up here as well. There we go. Okay, back into place mode. So. That will do it for us for now. Oh, let's just get a bit of control. So we've now got some rocks in our level. We've got the kind of glowy fire logs. We've got that in a little fireplace. And we've got our cabin, which is like the focal point of the scene. Brilliant. But what's really going to fill this scene out is the foliage. Foliage is really important. And that's what we're going to be concentrating on for the next few steps. So get yourself over to the next video. And we'll start motion along with that. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right?
I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.